So y'all, I am completely devastated that Pose is now coming to an end, but it looks like Janet Mock has been putting some time in at the gym because her career is about to execute a backbend. Let's discuss. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Prince by the name of Beasley. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, calm, and collected out there. Today, I want to talk to you guys about a TV show that I hold near and dear to my heart, and that is a show by the name of Pose. Pose is on FX. It is about a group of trans women and black gay men really going through the trials and tribulations of facing the AIDS epidemic, facing the lack of money woes, facing getting kicked out of their parents' house, all in the 80s and the 90s. And it is a true story about the ballroom scene that a lot of people don't know about. And a lot of people, this show has made a lot of people hip to the ballroom scene, including myself. Now, y'all, I'm not the best gay in the bunch, y'all. Like, I'm actually, for 20 years old, I'm kind of a late bloomer. I'm pretty new into the gay world and the gay lifestyle. I, and I really only have one foot in it, to be honest. But I've never been to a ball. I don't think they really even do that down here in Texas. I think that's more of like an up north thing. And I've never really been to or been exposed to like a gay house, like a gay lifestyle, like a gay mother and father. Because I've never had to do that. I've never been kicked out of my parents' house. So I never had to live with a, with a bunch of gays all in one house making ends meet. And that is a true blessing, but this story just really gives you like the inside look of what it was like to grow up as a gay or transgender woman up in the 80s and the 90s. And I think this story is just so important. I think it's just, I think it is a huge disservice that this show is ending after only three seasons, y'all. Coupled with the fact that this season is going to be shortened too. I think it's only going to have roughly like seven episodes, I think. I think last season was about 10 episodes. This season is going to be roughly seven episodes. Now, I may be wrong, and you guys feel free to correct me in the comments, but it's going to be a shortened season due to COVID. And overall, I saw the first two episodes, and I love them. But I will say, number one, I don't like how they handle the character Damon. Now, if you guys don't know, Damon, I don't want to spoil it for you, but his character kind of exits stage left out of nowhere in the second episode. And that's mainly due to over the last summer during like peak quarantine season, um, Damon in real life, his sister died. And I think he kind of like went through like a huge depression. So I think he kind of like asked to be let go from the show so he can grieve and get his life back together, which I'm fine with, but I just don't like the way they handled his character being written off the show. Now, like I said earlier, like this show, I hold near and dear to my heart because Besides like drama gay shows on YouTube, we don't really have black gay content, especially on a major network. Like we honestly haven't had like major black gay content on TV since uh, I want to say Noah's Ark back in the early 2000s. And even then, growing up as a little gay man, like I wasn't able to watch that show because you had to have like the premium channels to get Logo back in the day. But then they kind of shifted Logo to like a regular television show. But right when they did that, uh, Noah's Ark went off the air. So once again, I didn't have gay content. And then on top of that, um, I think there was black gay representation in the show Star, but I didn't really vibe with Star because long story short, Empire betrayed me. Empire let me down and I just was not ready to... I, Lee Daniels, if you ever watched this, hey, no shade, but I just was not ready to invest in one of your shows. Like, like I shade these Hollywood heavyweights that I may end up working with in the future, but so be it. I'm gonna speak my mind and be 100% transparent because this is my platform. And speaking of Lee Daniels, like Ryan Murphy, who writes this show and also is the writer for American Horror Story, like no shade, Ryan Murphy. I think what you do is amazing. But I'm just annoyed with the fact that we have so many seasons of American Horror Story, but yeah, we only have three seasons of Pose. And it comes into question is, why is this white gay man writing for a black and brown gay and transgender perspective? I think that's the reason why this show got shortened to such a degree. And honestly and truthfully, I think there's like a new bunch of writers for this season. And so far, the season is good, but like you can tell that there is some new writing in the mix. And overall in Hollywood, y'all, 
I hate to say this, but there's like I've actually I've said this before. There is a huge writer's block in the writer's room down to Hollywood. I don't know what is going on. Maybe these new generation of writers just don't have the stamina, have the wherewithal to like fight to the finish and like finish off a season with a bang. Because even shows that have great episodes and a great storyline going for multiple seasons, somehow when they get to the finale, it ends up being less than mediocre these days. But now I'm running on a tangent again. I, I tend to do that a lot. But let's get to the meat of what I want to talk about. So at the premiere of Pose, Janet Mock, who, if you don't know who she is, she is a very astute writer, television writer, television host, and also a transgender rights activist. And she is a beautiful black trans woman herself. She is one of the lead writers and the secondhand writer to Ryan Murphy for the show Pose. So at the premiere party for this current season, Janet Mock went and made a speech at this party. And y'all, reading the transcript, it really came off as like... She had one too many drinks or like not to say that she was on drugs or anything, but it just felt very like deranged. Like it felt like, like girl, were you hanging with Angel and Lulu? Like girl, what's going on? I'm going to read you guys a transcript of what transpired. So in the beginning of the speech, Janet Mark said, why am I making $40,000 an episode, huh? I'm angry. And then she went on to say, F Hollywood. Does this make you uncomfortable? It should. It should make you effing shake in your mother effing boots. This is speaking the truth. This is what Pose is. So then she goes on to address Ryan Murphy and then says, you brought girls in to help you. And then she's like, who brought the girls in? And then Ryan Murphy responds saying, I did. I wanted the girls to be there. And y'all, I'm surprised no, there's no video to this, but I can kind of tell that Ryan Murphy was probably like trying to like play off the crowd and like play off like, oh, what's going on? Ho, ho, ho. Also during the speech, she addressed her boyfriend, Angel Bismarck Carell, who plays Lil Poppy on the show. She pointed to him and asked him to stand up. And then she says, today I was going to let Angel go. I was going to let you go, right? But what did I do? I F someone on the crew, right? So at that point in the story, everybody's in shock, everybody's in awe, and I can only imagine the look on Angel's face like, dear God. But there's more. She then, at the end of the speech, says, I effed up, y'all. I forgot who the F I was. They want me to come up here and pretend. I don't need Hollywood, honey. You know why? Because I'm effing free. And she then later addresses the industry at large, and then she says, it's a show. But it means so much to everyone to ensure that we enable black and brown trans women to make it because that sounds good. It makes you comfortable to talk like that because then I don't scare you into facing the effing truth. You all have stomped on us. Now y'all reading that article, she comes off very deranged, alcohol induced, drunk boots. But at the end of her speech, I will say, she did make a decent point. Now, I personally feel that Jane and Mark has a point. Now, not with everything, for most of it, she sounds batshit crazy. But I will say that Pose really did give America at large like a Disney lens at the gay, black and brown, and transgender experience. Whereas today, gay people and mainly transgender people are still disrespected and unprotected at a huge alarming rate. I mean, there, you can't even tell me, like, there's a whole long list of black trans women that are still getting killed to this day at an alarming rate, and nobody talks about it. Nobody. It's like, it's like transgender people are, if you've seen the movie Us, they're the tethered, if that makes sense. Now, y'all may bash me for saying that, but that's how they're treated in society. They're treated like they don't exist. They're treated like they don't matter. And they have a new form of power in society. And some people may feel like that they're loud and they're misusing their power. No, they finally are being heard and they're finally being seen and they need to be respected. Now, when it comes to Jan and Mark, I'm all for everybody expressing their true, true thoughts. But at the same time, Janet, like, girl... You were at the forefront of the transgender movement in Hollywood, and I feel like this situation right here is going to cancel you out completely. Now, I'm not all for respectability politics, but however, Janet, like, you are a very, very important individual, and you have a lot to lose on your back. Like, you were the one person that opened the door for a lot of transgender people, 
And you cutting up like this is going to have the powers that be close the door on your face and make it hard for any transgender woman to make it in the industry. And I think Janet is so important because when I look at Janet, I don't really even see a transgender woman. Now, y'all may bash me in the comments for saying that, but when you look at her, she just looks like a, a normal black woman to me. Transgender women do not replace women, but I, like, I can't help but what I see. She looks like a, like a born bred woman to me. But it's good that we have somebody that can quote unquote pass because Janet, you do make other people comfortable to have transgender women at the table. She made a good point, but I just feel like this speech of hers was just very irresponsible. Like Janet, you got a lot to lose, girl. I don't know what's going to be her next project or what she's going to do after this, but I, I just, I hope that this does not cancel her out because like I will say it time and time again, America always cancels black women, but Janet being a transgender black woman is just like, Ooh, girl, it's just like you could barely even get a foot in the door. But overall, y'all, I'm ready for this season of Pose. Pose coming back really made me fall back in love with it, especially because I kind of like, kind of fell off on like what the storyline is because when something is flawless to me, I only watch it once. And seeing this season premiere of Pose just made me just like kick myself like, damn, like why are we losing this show? Especially so easily like this when they can really continue this story on through the 2000s. Talk about how the ballroom ended. Talk about how the ballroom had a resurgence. Talk about how the ballroom is today in 2020. They really could have went the long haul with this show. But I feel like the writers just don't have the juice and they're deciding to just call it quits and give it up. But Janet Mock, I'm going to pray for you, girl. I hope you pull through this and I hope you have a new project on the horizon. I don't know. It may seem like Janet Mock that you've fallen flat on your nose and now you can't even fall back on being an actress on Pose. So I just hope that you just have another project in the works and I hope you keep this movement going. Keep your head up, girl. Stay strong. But those are my views. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to come at you guys with some more content.